I'm happy to announce that March 1st is the official release date of the New Thinking Aloud magazine's first quarterly issue. You can download free PDF copies from the website of the New Thinking Aloud Foundation. If you like a high-quality printed edition as a collectible, you can order it from magcloud.com. Thinking Aloud Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. We'll be looking at training anomalous cognition today. With me is Dr. Ed May, who is the co-author of Anomalous Cognition, Remote Viewing, Research and Theory. He is also the co-author of ESP Wars East and West and the co-editor of a two-volume anthology called Extrasensory Perception, Support, Skepticism, and Science. In addition, he has received a Lifetime Career Award from the Parapsychology Association and he has been the research director for over a decade for the uh, U.S. Military Intelligence Psychic Spying Program, commonly known as Project Stargate. Welcome, Ed. Thank you, Jeffrey. A pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be with you once again. Uh, your interest in training remote viewing abilities or anomalous cognition mm -hmm. come, is primarily from the perspective of a researcher, which you are. Uh, yes, but uh, it had its origin in the fact the Army wanted to train military personnel so they could just recruit troops and train them to be remote viewers and have an automatic remote viewing unit in the, ar in the, in mm -hmm. the Army. Mm -hmm. An admirable goal and f uh, yeah. from my point of view, but a, and, and some were. They, yeah. they did engage in a, in a training program. Well, part of training comes down to a definitional problem. What do you yeah. mean by training? Yeah. Um, I'm not a good speed runner. And could, is it possible to train me to run a, a, a four minute mile? Well, I don't have the native ability to run a four minute mile. You know, yeah. if I could do a six minute mile, I'm really doing well. Mm -hmm. And all the training in the world would never get me to that goal. Right. And so what appears by other, looking at other kinds of training, tennis, football, you name it, the best you could do is train someone to reach their inherent native ability. Mm -hmm. And like any other training situation, people have a wide range of skills. Um, some are better at uh, poker, some are better at running, some are better at jumping and so on. Yeah. And not everybody has the same level of skill. And the trouble, I should think, with remote viewing or anomalous cognition is that we don't even really quite know what it is, how it works at all, how to train something that's so unknown. Exactly. Um, in fact, that's frustrating. Yeah. You know, if we, if we try a particular training methodology and it fails, we don't know why it failed. Maybe it failed because the people who were training had no psychic ability whatsoever, mm -hmm. or maybe they had brilliant psychic uh, ability and the training methodology was all wrong. In, in fact, even if the training works, you don't necessarily know why. Yeah, why did we even try that? <laughs> but the serious part of it is uh, mm -hmm. we want to train for both research to, in other words, can we find people who in fact can do this marvelous phenomenon known as remote viewing? Yeah. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, uh, we didn't, we s failed at that particular goal. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Professor Jessica Utz, a, a statistician of, of note, mm -hmm. uh, analyzed all the work that was done at remote viewing and training at SRI International, and her final conclusion is, we have no evidence in support of training. Well, that's uh, a conclusion that stands in contrast to the many different organizations that offer instruction yes. and training in remote viewing, some, some of which is offered at a very high price with many promises. <laughs> um, I 
could make some pretty na nasty comments about that. Yeah. But the serious issue is that all those people who are offering those are well met. Mm -hmm. they, they, I'm not questioning their motivations, mm -hmm. but they're not aware of what is now available online, the training methodologies. Yeah. And so I'm not sure if I had some money and ask, well, should I take some well-meaning army personnel who has no advanced degrees at all in any science whatsoever, why would I pay that individual to teach something as complex as remote learning training? That's a question. Mm -hmm. Well, many people uh, aren't thinking <coughs> along those lines. You pretty much need an advanced degree in science to appreciate what a, another person with an advanced degree can offer. Nonsense. I don't buy that story at all. Okay. Uh, it, it is, first of all, uh, if you're going to produce a product of yeah. any kind, is there a market for that product? Mm -hmm. In this case, there's a huge market because yeah. in some sense, frankly, it's a little bit misleading. Instead of saying, we will find out what your native skill level is and help you to reach that skill level, I would be in support of that. Mm -hmm. Instead, the implication is, although it's not explicitly said, well, we will teach you to be like Joe McMonagall, the best remote viewer on the planet. And that's a lot of people have that expectations. And we get calls from people who's, who've gone through a, a training methodology you can get online mm -hmm. or what have you, and they call us up in tears because they go home and say, want to show remote viewing to their relatives, and they can't do it. Well, let's talk about okay. uh, some of the problems that exist. Uh, I think the, the, the situation may be even worse because Many times, Joe McMonagall, is, who is a, a wonderful person and very skilled, and yeah. someone you've worked with closely for decades. Yes. Uh, but people have uh, a false understanding of what he can do. They say, well, this guy's 100% accurate. Uh, well, he's never been 100% <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Uh, one of our other remote viewers gets a funny story. Uh, if you're looking at remote viewing training, you have to worry about what are good targets. Yeah. And here is a particularly awful target, a tree in a dirt path. Mm -hmm. Because if you close your eyes and imagine a remote viewing session, you get an image of a tree in a dark path. You think, there's got to be something more there. Yeah. So you fill in a lot of empty blanks that aren't there. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting with this fellow. His name is Nevin Lance, a mm -hmm. marvelous remote viewer. Yeah. And we started the session, and he said, Hmm, I'm getting a tree and a path, that's it. It was over in two seconds. Mm. And it was 100% correct in that example. So he knew when to stop. He knew when to stop. That's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, okay, so if you have somebody, the issue about training, for sure, you cannot train anybody if I'm sitting in front of you as your trainer and I'm looking at the target that I'm training you on. Yeah. And an awful lot of the training methodologies use that mm -hmm. action error. Mm -hmm. It got worse. And this was Ingo Swan's great idea based on what's called operant conditioning. Mm -hmm. In other words, I want to give you feedback immediately so you'll embed the experience when you get it right. Mm -hmm. The idea was marvelous, and yeah. Ingo deserves a lot of credit Immediate for that. Immediate feedback is a good idea. That sounds good idea. Mm -hmm. But here I go. You, I've got a picture here, Jeffrey, and you say waterfall. You say water, and I mm -hmm. say correct. Yeah. Now, you're not going to start telling me about a pyramid in the desert. Now, no, you won't. because you're giving me visual cues. I'm give, Not only that, I'm giving verbal cues. I mm -hmm. told you what the, it's yeah. water. Mm -hmm. And then you say a camel, and I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm already giving you what turns out to be like the old game on radio called 20 questions. Sure. And it's not anything at all associated with size. So a person might go through a training program like that and yeah. appear to be doing very good, but actually they're just reading the cues. Right. Well, it's, you know, if I'm not even giving you intermediate feedback at all, mm -hmm. and you say water and I lean slightly forward, yeah. and you say camel and I lean slightly back, that's nonverbal cues. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been a great deal of research of uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, expectation effects by the researcher in yeah. standard psychology. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I can telegraph to you by encoding what I expect to have happen. And if you're a good decoder of my nonverbal communication, yeah. that drives the system, and not in, remote viewing. Often in uh, daily life, I understand maybe 80% of the information uh, that we communicate is nonverbal. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there's an interesting idea. When we look at each other, we involuntarily scan what looks to me as the right side of your face. That's your left side. Mm -hmm. And that left side of your face is to 
is primarily muscularly controlled by the uh, right side of your brain. Right. And that's a recognition of your uh, emotional state. Mm -hmm. So involuntarily, I'm learning what your state is by s scanning that. By the way, dogs do that to humans as mm -hmm. well, but n not to any other uh, species. Just yeah. as an now, there's a, a lot of research I understand about how people can get in sync with each other if they're just near each other at very subtle, yeah. microscopic, physiological uh, levels. Things well, start to synchronize. We're social beasts. Yeah. <laughs> and that may appear to be uh, some kind of ESP, but it's not. I don't think so. Yeah. And so it, it's... Uh, <clears throat> The main thing about ESP and training remote viewing, mm -hmm. there's a misassumption out there that it can be perfect. Mm -hmm. Frankly, um, getting information by remote viewing is as bad as the, cal tele as the <clears throat> California telephone system. <laughs> uh, the fact that it works as well as it does is a miracle unto itself. Yeah. The problem is, you know, people would like to be able to read by remote viewing. People would like to be able to get the combination of your of uh, the lockdown at the at the uh, at the bank, mm -hmm. and it, that's just beyond the capability that we currently understand that remote yeah. viewing can do. Or uh, people say, if you're so smart, how come you aren't rich? Why not win the Powerball lottery? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a good technical answer to that. There's not enough information sitting for five hours that you can get by remote viewing is to find out six double-digit numbers. It just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And that's involving uh, information theory and a lot of stuff well beyond what we're talking about. No, things that you as a physicist have actually looked into. Of so course. You, you were speaking from uh, having made that inquiry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a couple of things here. People uh, often in the public have a misimpression of what they ought to be able to accomplish yes. with remote viewing. and. Uh, what you're saying is that there's a lot of uh, hype yep. out there, and, and so people need to be aware it, it, when it works really well. You've worked with the best remote viewers around for decades. Yes, you've, I'm sure you've seen some amazing hits. I have, and I've seen some amazing failures yeah. as well. So, so people need to appreciate yeah. that. Well, on the other hand. Uh, we all use our intuition, and maybe that's a, a, another name, a synonym for remote viewing. Mm -hmm. And there are people maneuvering through life. You remember the, the book in the 70s, um, Executive ESP? Yes, indeed. And taking a bit of poetic license, basically people, successful executives use their ESP even though they don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the, you know, if you're going to make a decision, in absence of data, what you do is you try to use your experience, your intuition, everything, and we think, as, as Douglas Dean thought, maybe a little ESP will sneak in there. Yeah. So yeah. if I were doing succession planning and I had two competitors to be the next CEO and they were equal in all elements, I would choose the guy that did well in psyche, the person who did mm -hmm. well in psyche. Yeah. Test. That, that makes sense. But now, it's, the other problem that you're saying is that some of the programs that are out there today yeah. and were even used within the U.S. military intelligence yeah. system for training remote viewing were based on some faulty scientific assumptions. I think so. Now there's a, vi a vigorous spirit of debate on that with some of these people. Yeah. Um, and part of it, Ingo Swan, which is the basis of a lot of that training, which was misinterpreted in my view, my mm -hmm. opinion, uh, I've never seen an individual work harder than he including myself, mm -hmm. uh, that tried to understand this marvelous experience he had as a marvelous remote viewer. Yeah. And he was not a scientific, uh, he was not science trained, had a very high IQ, and he would spend 12 to 14 hours a day at the library at Stanford reading mm -hmm. about all the operant conditioning mm -hmm. and technical things. The problem came with, he wanted to give this intermediate feedback, and mm -hmm. that was a disaster. Mm -hmm. And that was instilled somehow in some of the early trainees of the Army. Well, I know that um, some of the hypnotic training uh, for ESP, some of Milan Riesel's yeah. early work uh, in hypnosis involved something similar, and, and the idea was to help build up people's confidence. Sure. And I think it's important. I, f I forget who was it, uh, Bachelor that did the, the fake table laving? Yeah. And, you know, to build the confidence. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. I don't mind that. It's an old shamanistic trick. Yeah, and it works fine. But mm -hmm. sometimes you stop it and yeah. get onto the real science. Right. <clears throat> and for some reason, Ingo never made it that far. Mm -hmm. um, there were some jewels of wisdom in Ingo's training. 
uh, and based on what I like to think of as a word association test in, in psychology, mm -hmm. you know, you're faking it. I'm your therapist and you're trying to tell me what you think I want you to say, right? Yeah. So on a word association test, I try to get you, I say big and you say some word without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I get a little insight into what's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant on Ingo's part, yeah. that he gives a stimulus like the geographical coordinates, or we currently use the word target, and I want to know the first thing that pops into your mind, don't think about it. Yeah. So in a, in a training session or in an actual remote viewing session, I'll say, okay, Jeffrey, target, give me the response. And I see you going, hmm, I say, break, no more, I don't want to hear what you're pondering because yeah. you can't reach the answer by logical inference. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're doing when you hesitate. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant on Ingo's part. Mm -hmm. Well, I recall uh, speaking just a week ago to Joe McBonagall about training. And I know yeah. you and Joe share many of these same uh, viewpoints. And right. he suggested that what uh, where training is really useful is to help people unlearn the habits that we have that block yep. our functioning. Exactly, and I completely agree. You know, if I were saying if someone wanted to be trained a remote viewer, uh, I'm not. I'm not a show for his books, but I would recommend <laughs> binding, yeah. buying uh, remote viewing secrets. Mm -hmm. And the most thing that he writes about in that are things that you shouldn't do. It's yeah. to unlearn things and uh, a few tips. Mm -hmm. so let's take an example. Suppose you were born on Mars and never, ever, ever heard of a racket game, how to play tennis or squash okay. or anything. Like that. And I bring you down to Earth and I have a, a net and a racket ball and a ball. I'm a tennis ball and, and a tennis racket. And I say, your job, oh, Mr. Martian, is to use this funny looking thing to get the round thing on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. You've never heard of a racket. Yep. And so you think, oh, well, I, to make sure I can grip that funny looking thing, I'll grip it at the, at the business end, what we think of the business <laughs> yeah. end, and so I can have a good hit on it. And I yeah. said, no, no, let me give you a tip. Switch it, grab the small end. <laughs> That's not, is that training or is that a tip? Uh -huh. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. In fact, training methodology is very difficult and when you when you look at it through that perspective. And what I think Joe does in, in that book is to give tips mm -hmm. rather than training. And it allows you to reach whatever native skill level you have. Mm -hmm. Well, so much of uh, remote viewing for people who have been through the, the variety of programs sure. that seem to have uh, been spin-offs from the military uh, work is uh, about protocols. Yes. Uh, so many different things that you you first you look at the overview, then you look at the particular objects, and you take another look at the objects. And well, that came from Ingo, yeah. and we had I think three separate different training tracks, of which Ingo was one of them. Mm -hmm. And so we had tried a whole lot of uh, other ones. Uh, one of the really good remote viewers had a blink test training. Mm -hmm. You know, you close your eyes, open it up, close them again, and describe the picture we were holding in front of your face. Uh -huh. And to get the idea, you know, one issue that people think happens, don't. It doesn't happen. And that mm -hmm. is, you close your eyes, you get a multimedia extravaganza in high definition between <laughs> your ears, <laughs> and all you got to do is describe it. Yeah. No, no, that's not what's going to happen. And Wish so, that it would. Oh, boy, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this case, um, that blink test was to get people used to having almost a subliminal experience and being mm -hmm. able to describe that. Yeah. That was an interesting train of methodology. It didn't work very well, but it was an interesting idea. Uh -huh. And that's what led Jessica Utz to come to the conclusion we could not support because we didn't have a good definition of what we meant training. Mm -hmm. So what, what you can do is help provide people with tips. Yes. You can help provide people with a supportive social environment. Absolutely critical. Uh, people with whom they can communicate and share yes. experiences and who will encourage them and yeah. uh, not say that uh, they're crazy for even thinking this is possible. That's really important. Yeah. Let me give you an example. One of the things in, in a, what we call our operational research, in other words, how can we make the spying better yeah. rather than understanding the phenomenon, we looked at things like lucid dreaming and we looked at hypnosis. And mm -hmm. because we had a lot of resources, we hired Stanford University's top experimental hypnotist. Mm -hmm. And he came to do this. And one of the things we looked at, uh, long story short, is that the it was successful only to the degree that the hypnotist and the uh, remote viewer got along with each other. Mm -hmm. I happen to know a woman very well well uh, in, in, in Hungary. Her name is Eva Banyai. 
and she was head of the World Hypnosis Society and just a brilliant woman in terms of hypnosis. And I was hungry, in Hungary talking to her one day. I said, you know, the only thing we figured out was that, that the relationship, the interpersonal relationship mm -hmm. between the hypnotist and the, hip, the person being hypnotized, and she said, well, it's about time you figured out. We've known that for years. Uh -huh. And I felt like an idiot. Well, but rapport, the people, yeah. working with people with whom you have good rapport is very important. And that's true in remote viewing too. And Russell Targ had absolutely a most magnificent ability to do that. He can coax ESP out of a rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what are some of the other pitfalls in uh, training? Uh, I think it, the biggest pitfall, I think, is expecting something more vigorous then it actually happens. And mm -hmm. I, even even uh, Joe says this, you know, sometimes it feels like just a wild guess. Yeah. Go with it. Mm -hmm. I should think patience is very important in, in, in this work. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. that, that's an interesting question because uh, remote viewings can happen in a few seconds, like, this yeah. is a tree and a path I quit. <laughs> uh -huh. And sometimes we work a problem for days in an operational case, like some tunnels in some foreign country, you know, mm -hmm. and we'd go after it over and over and over and over again. Uh, what Hal uh, and Russ found early on in, when they were doing a narrative remote viewing after outbound sites, I was the judge in a lot of those cases, mm -hmm. you know, 10 pages of transcripts, I'd throw nine of them away mm -hmm. and make the decision based on the first page. Mm -hmm. Because once you get there, the problem is we humans are great at filling in the details that aren't there. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's one avoidance. Don't spend a lot of time on it. Quick, bright, and breezy, and not ponderous. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a reputation as being an excellent judge. I am. Your, yourself, and half of remote viewing, besides the viewing, is the judging. Yeah. Now I'll tell you where I'm a terrible judge. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I'm a good judge is because I've been working with the same people for 30, 30 years. Yeah. So I know their individual idiosyncrasies. And these people, unlike normal uh, remote viewing out in the real world, these people have been trained because our tasking was to tell us what the target is and not what it reminds them of. Mm -hmm. Because if we want to save, it, find a find a, a kidnap victim, I'm sorry, the fact that it reminds you of your apple pie your mother used to bake, that's completely useless for me. Yeah. In, so, in other words, uh, I guess that's called analytical overlay. Well, but no, but that's yeah. the question we want them to give us. You know, don't tell me what you think it is. Tell yeah. me, tell me what, no, no, don't tell me what it reminds you yeah, of. Yeah. Tell me what you believe it is. Now, oh, in the okay. Gonsfeld, for example, yeah. Kathy Dalton had a 40% hit rate in the Gons Gonsfeld at Edinburgh, and she asked me to do the judging. Mm -hmm. I scored it a chance. Oh. The reason being is it was all kind of allegorical and what it reminded the individuals, I did not know how to judge that. I see, but that was necessary in her case. In their case, yeah. Because the methodology, the tasking was different. Uh -huh. Here, and it's very narrow, and that's why I'm a good judge. You know, I judge an awful lot of remote viewings, and but with people who know that they are only to give me what will help me as a judge separate out among the possibilities. What the target is, not what it's like. So I, it removes from my judging the, the, as much subjectivity on my part as possible. It makes the job much easier. And yet in Kathy Dalton's experiment, the opposite was the exactly. case. Exactly. And that was really insightful for me to, mm -hmm. to be able to fail categorically. But I wasn't the, the judge of choice. It, she was just it was a secondary case. to Because a judge. skeptic could go through and say, well, she must have misjudged it if you can't re replicate the judging. Well, not every judge who judges the Olympics gives the same score. You know? <laughs> so, you know, the human judges are human, too. Mm -hmm. Although we had a kangaroo on our group. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a big subjective element to so much of this remote viewing. That's right. And, and the other thing is that even a great viewer like Joe has to go through periods when he's just not getting much. Oh, I've seen many of those periods. Uh -huh. I have a sort of um, a qualitative number of his success rate over the years where 20% is chance he's running at 48%. Mm -hmm. And that means he has some spectacular failures. Yeah. Even uh, like 
a great baseball player like a Babe Ruth who yeah. struck out more than he hit home runs. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. That's a great analogy. I'm going to steal it from you. Okay? <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome to that. Well, one of the points that Joe made is yeah. that he became a good remote viewer because the military paid him to do it. Right. Uh, so that he would kind of slog through it and uh, stick with it even when it was discouraging. Yeah, because that was that's what was he was being paid for, and his whole career was in a sense ruined. That was the only option to him left in the military because yeah. he got assigned to this unit, and he could no longer be assigned to any other unit to do any other thing. But but these days, very few people, especially while they're in their learning phase, are not yeah. going to be paid. No, that's true. So they they're going to have to persevere through periods when it looks like nothing of any significance is happening. Well, put off on target explored um, what inducements you can get to get people to do well, M&Ms mm -hmm. or paying. Turns out none of that seemed to work, so it seems to have worked for Joe only. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, my, induce, my, my reward for doing it as a researcher, I'm absolutely fascinated by beginning to, as a physicist, as physicist to figure out some aspect of reality that all of us have overlooked in the past. Mm -hmm. That's thrilling. Yeah. And somebody pays me to do that? They're crazy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you've come up with some very significant findings. We have May, maybe not a huge wealth, but a handful of important findings yes. that we've been discussing and we will continue. Yes to discuss, but I, I think from this particular interview about training, one of the takeaways is that uh, if uh, one were to go through all the data that was collected about mm -hmm. training during mm -hmm. the uh, 20 years of uh, military intelligence work in remote viewing, the bottom line is that the, the training per se, you, you don't have data to show it succeeded. Yes, by the definition of training. That said, however, we would tell you that if you want to try to learn remote viewing, buy a simple book and um, go with your gut. Mm -hmm. And that's easy. And maintain the protocol. The protocol means in this case that no one else in the world knows the target who is sitting in front of you. Maintain a double blind. You absolutely must do a double blind or you're fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. Ed May, thank you once again for being with me. Well, always it's great fun, Jeffrey. Thank it's you. It's been entertaining and enlightening. For me also. And thank you for being with us.